welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and amazingly, I'm still going to talk about Modern Horizons 3 just a little bit here because there's a particular card from that set that got a whole lot of buzz. I think a lot of people are trying to figure out how to make it work in a deck, and I was like, eh, I build a lot of decks. Maybe I'll tackle this one myself. The card is Ugin's Binding. Two and a blue instant. Of course, it has Devoid. Return target non-land permanent. You don't control to owner's hand. For three mana, pretty bad, of course. However, when you cast a colorless spell with mana value seven or greater, you may exile Ugin's Binding from your graveyard. When you do, return each non-land permanent you don't control to owner's hand. And of course, that's the part that a lot of people are freaking out about. Obviously, it's, it's a cyclonic rift, right? It's giving you the same effect. I will just say, okay, <laughs> I mean, I have made a deck here with this card, essentially, but there's a very specific reason that I've made a deck with this card. I haven't made a deck with this card because I think this card is so good that you need to build a deck around it. It's a Cyclonic Rift, right? And in fact, you know, if you're assembling a two-card combo to make this work, you're essentially a assembling a two-card combo to just cast a Cyclonic Rift, which to me doesn't seem super great. I mean, th this you're getting for free, but you have to cast a spell with mana value seven or greater. So seven is what an overloaded Cyclonic Rift costs. And at the end of the day, you're really not gaining much out of this, I don't think. It is a good effect, obviously, just like Cyclonic Rift is a great effect in a commander game. However, when I saw this, I thought, okay, well, there's also another card from Modern Horizons 3, Kozilek Unsealing, two and a blue enchantment with Devoid. Whenever you cast a creature spell with mana value four, five, or six, create two, oh, one. Colorless Eldrazi spawn creature tokens with sacrifices creature, add a colorless. That's okay. However, whenever you cast a creature spell with mana value seven or greater, draw three cards. And I was thinking, okay, well, this wants you to cast creature spells with mana value seven or greater, and Ugin's Binding wants you to cast colorless spells with mana value seven or greater. Okay. And then I remember a card from a ways back that I really liked a lot, Sarkin's Unsealing, which of course is very similar to Kozilek's Unsealing 3, and a red enchantment whenever you cast a creature spell with power four, five, or six. Sarkin's Unsealing deals four damage to any target. Whenever you cast a creature spell with power seven or greater, Sarkin's Unsealing deals four damage to each opponent and each creature and planeswalker they control. So I thought, wouldn't it be funny to put all these in a deck together? And if we can make it so that we can trigger all of them, and of course we don't have to trigger them all at once, we just have to be able to trigger all of them. So of course, Ugin's Binding wants Colorless Spell with mana value seven or greater. Kozilek's Unsealing wants creature spell with mana value seven or greater and Sarkin's Unsealing wants a creature spell with power seven or greater. So of course we can just fill up this deck with colorless creature spells that have a power of seven or greater. I have 13 creatures in this deck that fit all three of those, right? So if we have just one of them, right? If we have our Ugin's Binding in our graveyard and we cast one of these guys, it will trigger that. We'll get that Cyclonic Rift effect. It's just a one-time thing. Again, for me, Ugin's Binding is the least powerful option in this deck. The other two are much better. Repeatedly drawing three cards every time we cast one of those guys or repeatedly dealing four damage to each opponent, each creature and Planeswalker they control. Those are really great effects and I think worth building around. Now, I went with an artifact theme here, okay? That's what I did. I'm in Is It Colors here, right? I'm in red and blue, and Is It does the artifact theme pretty well. I also just don't like Eldrazi. That's just me. So I didn't want to build the more obvious Eldrazi theme, but you could. And if you did, you could also throw Kozilek's Return in this deck which has a very similar wording to Ugin's Binding. Two and a red instant with the void. It deals two damage to each creature. Whenever you cast an Eldrazi creature spell with mana value seven or greater, you may exile Kozilek's return from your graveyard. If you do, it deals five damage to each creature. So this obviously fits as well if you're doing Eldrazi because this specifically says Eldrazi creature spell. So if you wanted to take this deck, you, you could make a few changes. You just take the idea. Now you're sort of building around four cards rather than just three. I actually, funny enough, was going to use Kozilek's Return originally, and then I realized it's only Eldrazi creature spell. And you could just take out, not, not all of the artifact creatures I put in here, but you, know, you could replace them with Eldrazi instead. 
Um, I don't know if it would work as well because I do have, you know, some of these cards are working particularly well with artifacts, which I will get to. But you certainly could do that if you prefer Eldrazi. I also have a few creatures that don't fit every single scenario, but fit some. Like Cyana Draco, I think is a good fit in the deck. It is going to fit the Ugin's Binding because it is a colorless spell with mana value 7 or greater. And it's going to fit the Kozilek's Unsealing because it is a creature spell with mana value 7 or greater, but will not trigger the Sarkin's Unsealing, right? So I have some that don't fit all of them. I have Inqua Leviathan in here, which of course is a blue card. I mean, it's a great creature, gets played in Commander quite often, and this, because it's not colorless, will not trigger the Ugin's Binding, but will trigger the other two. Bosch Iron Golem, which I had to put in here because of course this fantastic ability of pay three and a red, sacrifice an artifact, and it deals damage equal to the sacrificed artifacts mana value to any target, very much fits with the theme of what we're doing, right? We have a lot of colorless creatures in this deck that you know, they're expensive and they got a big power because they want to trigger our stuff and we can attack with them, but having alternate ways to use them, of course, is going to be important as well. Bosch is a colorless card and of course has the mana value seven or greater, but doesn't have the power of seven and only has a power of six. So again, it's not going to trigger everything, but it will trigger some of the stuff. And I got Grozoth in this deck. Again, obviously not colorless. It will trigger the mana value and it will trigger the power, but it won't trigger the colorless. However, this is an idea I talked about in one of my 10 deck ideas video, which I think is funny enough going to fit in here. So six, blue, 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 Leviathan, nine, nine. So nine mana, that's a lot, but it's a nine, nine, has Defender. That's not great. However, you can pay for to have it lose Defender until end of turn. We don't really care about that. The reason why it's in the deck is because when it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for any number of cards with mana value 9, reveal them, and put them into your hand. If you do, shuffle your library. And of course, we got a bunch of creatures, colorless creatures that we want that are mana value 9. So we can go get a bunch and put them in our hand. It also has Transmute, so we can pay one blue blue and just go get one other if we want to mana value nine creature like our inkwell leviathan out of our deck and put it in our hand which you know a lot more menacing of a creature than a nine nine with defender right so grows off is you know obviously if we cast it we can transmute it but if we cast it we will end up triggering our sarkin's unsealing and our kozilex unsealing and then be able to refill our hand with a bunch of big scary things that'll trigger our stuff Obviously, the big mana value is the theme of this deck. I got Thrix, the Sudden Storm, right? There actually is a lot more stuff that will fit this theme. Three blue, blue, elemental giant, four, five with flash and flying. Spells you cast with mana value five or greater cost one less to cast and can't be countered. That's a great fit in the deck, obviously. Also got Streamer Killer, four and a red Tyranid, five, five from Warhammer 40k, obviously. Has Trample. Whenever you cast a creature spell with mana value five or greater, deals five damage to any target, right? So we start piling up these sorts of effects where I can get three card draw off of casting one of my, you know, maybe not so great artifact creatures. And then also I get to throw five damage around. That seems pretty good. I have dragon wings in the deck, which, you know, gives enchanted creature flying, not particularly great, but when a creature with mana value six or greater enters the battlefield, you may return it from your graveyard to play and chanting that creature. So of course, this is just gonna give any of our big scary creatures flying and then dragon breath as well works very similar, but gives that creature haste. So fitting the big mana value creature theme, finding other ways to use those big creatures because you will, you know, it'll load up in your hand and you won't be able to just cast them all. Mercurial Chemister, easy fit in the deck. We can pay one blue and tap it to draw two cards. That's always good. But also we can pay a red and tap it, discard a card and it deals damage to target target creature equal to the discarded cards mana value right we're in the big mana value theme here we got to get these creatures out right everyone is going to be saying well how are we casting these giant expensive creatures of course red has a whole bunch of fantastic ritual effects that we can use here geo surge is a great one red 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 sorcery add seven red so four mana to add seven red to your mana pool spend this only to cast artifact or creature spells Great, no problem. We're all about that. Iron Crag Feet as well. One red, red, red. So again, four mana sorcery to add seven red. You may cast only one more spell this turn. That's okay. It's a great way to get out our really expensive creatures. 
Semblance Anvil, as I've talked about so many times before, is one of the best effects for reducing cost. Three mana artifact and has imprint. When it enters the battlefield, you exile an online card from your hand. Spells you cast that share a card type with it. The exiled card cost two less to cast. I mean, the best way to use this card, and we will be doing that in this deck, is we exile an artifact creature. And of course, we got a ton of those in this deck. And when we exile an artifact creature, it will allow us to cast all our artifacts for two less, but also our creatures for two less as well. Slow Bad Iron Goblin, two and a red. Phyrixian Goblin Artificer, three, three, tap. Sacrifice an artifact, add an amount of red equal to the sacrificed artifacts mana value. Spend this mana only to cast artifact spells or activated abilities of artifacts. And with this, and also with our commander, which I will get to, we can get into some looping effects a little bit where we cast a really expensive, like an eight mana artifact creature. It comes down, it triggers, say, our Kozilex unsealing and maybe our Sarkhan's unsealing and draws us some cards and does a bunch of damage to all of our opponents and their creatures. Then we sacrifice that creature to cast another one, which then triggers those things again, right? We can get into some pretty fantastic scenarios where you're doing this over and over and over again. And of course, we can do this with one of the commanders from this deck as well, Elena Kessig Trapper. Four any red, human scout, four, three, first strike. Tap, add an amount of red equal to the greatest power among creatures you control then enter the battlefield this turn. So this is going to be a fantastic mana dork in this deck. Funny enough, I had originally had this in the 99 of this deck because I was, I mean, this is a method two deck where I came up with the idea, obviously, first of building around those particular cards and then find commanders later. And I had Elena in the 99. I thought actually that could work as a commander if I could find a blue commander to go with it. And again, we can have a huge creature come down, add a bunch of red, use that to then cast another creature. And of course, the obvious fit for the other partner here is Brynlin, the Moon Kraken, which also is doing the big mana value thing, right? Six blue, blue, Kraken, six, eight. So this will trigger, unfortunately, only our Kozilex Unsealing, which is looking for a creature spell with mana value seven or greater. It doesn't have the seven power and it's obviously not colors either, but that's not really why it's a commander. When it enters the battlefield or whenever you cast a spell with mana value six or greater, you're going to return a non-land permit to owner's hand. It's giving us that benefit. So it will trigger a lot of our big mana value stuff, but it also is giving us that trigger every time we cast big mana value stuff. So this is essentially sort of, is it big mana value tribal? Another reason why I like this deck a lot is because it's a very non-typical is it deck so there's also that as well right if you're just sick of playing spell slinger decks in is it colors or maybe artifact tribal i mean i guess this is a little bit of artifact tribal not a ton but it is built mostly around i would say those three cards in the 99 but also is built around just the big mana value tribal as well. Really interesting build. If you're at all interested, the deck list is in the description. Feel free to check it out for yourself. That is it for today though, and thanks for tuning in.